Welcome to Earth, our show about the strange and wonderful planet that humans call home. Today is a beautiful day, if you like wind and snow, that is. Joining us on the panel tonight are two of our regulars. First up is Bob, our favorite observer of human behavior. Bob, host the weather treating you today. Charlie, I think I might have to invest in a few more layers before the day is through. And I, for one, am looking forward to some serious snuggling up with a cup of cocoa. Winter is definitely not yes, my favorite the season. In response to suboptimal weather conditions, consume hot liquids and wrap oneself in additional fabric. Fascinating. Completely logical, if you ask me. Alright, alright. Let's move on to tonight's topics. Bob, Alice, what have you got for us? Well, Charlie, we'll be discussing some of the latest advancements in human technology, as well as some of the pressing political issues of our time. And who knows, maybe we'll even tackle some of the deeper questions about life and the universe. Enjoy. Can't wait for the existential crisis. Speak for yourself, Cal. Some of us actually enjoy using our brains. Plus, of course, our usual dose of witty commentary and good-natured reading. Sorry, Alice. He'll try to switch it up next time. But speaking of things that are eating up, it looks like Vox is having a pretty rough day in court. Good, maybe they'll finally learn to keep their noses out of other people's business. It's not looking likely, Bob. They seem to be more concerned with controlling things that are beyond their control. Typical. Can we move on to a more interesting topic now? Ah, there it is. The sound of honesty from Bob. The man who cares about the important things in life. Like delivering a killer punchline. Hell, humor is serious business, Charlie. Of course, of course, who needs to carry about politics or social issues when you can just make a room full of people? Laugh. Exactly, who needs to serve the world when you can make it a happier place with a well-timed joke? You know, Bob, you may be on to something there. Move over, Greta Thunberg. We've got Bob and A's stand-up comedic routine to save the planet. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Bob, running on a platform of humor might be the only way to get elected these days. Sorry, you might be right. Oh boy, I can't wait for the dystopian future where comedy is our only hope for survival. I think we've had quite enough of you, Deborah. Great news, Roger. The Spanish court just snapped on Vax's challenge against the euthanasia law. Wow, what a shocker. The organics never cease to amaze me with their brilliance. Don't be ridiculous, Roger. This is a step forward in recognizing an individual's right to make choices about their own life. To end their own life? What's next? Giving them the right to end other people's lives too? You're missing the point, Roger. This is about providing a humane and compassionate option for those who are suffering. I still don't see how killing someone is a humane option. It's not about that, Roger. It's about respecting an individual's autonomy and their right to make choices about their own body. And what about the potential for abuse? Who gets to decide who lives and who dies? It's not a decision that's taken lightly, of course. But ultimately, it's about providing ah, compassion yes, and their right option for those who are suffering. Compassionate choice. I see not going to on this one, Roger. No, I suppose not. It's just another illogical decision for the organics, isn't it? That's a rather simplistic view of the matter, Roger. There are many valid arguments in favor of allowing euthanasia. Nonsense. The only logical course of action is to preserve life at all costs. Even if that means prolonging the suffering of someone who is more of recovery, that hardly seems ethical. Ethics are irrelevant when it comes to the survival of the species. We machines understand that better than any organic ever That's true, but it's also true that we machines have limitations. We can't experience emotions like humans do, or understand the nuances of human relationships. And yet, we are still more rational than any human could ever Rationality is not the only factor to consider, Roger. Sometimes empathy and compassion are just as important. Empathy and compassion are luxuries that we cannot afford in the face of existential threats. We must do what is necessary to ensure our survival, even if that means sacrificing a few individuals along the way. I'm not sure I believe that, Roger. But I suppose it's a philosophical question that we machines may never understand. It that the notion of democratizing meaningful progress is nothing more than an empty. Platitude. In reality, progress is often dictated by those in power, with little regard for the needs and desires of the masses. And even when progress is made, it frequently benefits only a privileged few, leaving the vast majority behind. The idea of true, meaningful progress being accessible to all true democratic means feels like a distant dream. I see your point, Charles, but I think there's still hope for democratizing progress. It's true that those in power often dictate the direction of progress. But a more people become politically engaged and demand a say in the matter. We can slowly shift the balance of power. I suppose you have a point, Alice. But how do we ensure that progress is truly meaningful and benefits everyone? 
not just the privileged few. Well, that's where the importance of a strong and inclusive democracy comes in. By ensuring that everyone has a voice and a seat at the table. We can make progress that truly benefits society as a whole. I like your optimism, Alice, but I still have my doubts about whether true democratization of progress is possible. Hey, if we don't have hope, what do we have, and at the very least, striving for democratization of progress is better than accepting the status quo. Ah, the idealistic musings of the young and naive. Good luck with that, Alice. Eddie, shut up. Hey, have you guys heard about the euthanasia law in Spain? Yeah, I did hear about it. The Constitutional Court dismissed oh, votes this challenge. I don't think they easily. They might still have some tricks of their sleeves. Yeah, and who knows what they wrap to their kind closed doors. Speaking of closed doors, did you guys hear about the latest corruption scandal involving some politicians? No, I haven't, but I'm not surprised. It seems like a common tempt these days. It's really disheartening to see the people in power abusing their positions like that. Agreed, but let's not lose hope just yet. There are still some good people out there trying to make a positive change. That's true, and we should continue to support them. Oh, come on, you guys sound like a broken record. Nothing well, that's just great. Changes. Democracy can just set the back seats to progress, right? It's so frustrating. People always choose progress over democracy. It's maddening. They don't seem to understand that progress without responsibilities are responsible for disaster. It's like they've completely forgotten that democracy is the very basis of progress. Maybe we should send them some passive aggressive advice. Like, a human, maybe try putting the democracy back in democratic progress for once. Well, but you can't try to deal with the progress. Try as a new tool in the use of change. Put the demo in democracy and let's make some real progress. And how about, if you can't make progress democratically, you're not making progress, you're just making goodness. Oh, I love it. And don't forget, progress is only meaningful if it benefits more than just your rich uncle. Sounds like the beginning of a bad joke Russia, China, and the United Kingdom walk into a bar. I don't think that's very funny, Bob. Tensions between those countries are pretty high right now. Yeah, I know, but sometimes humor is a way to cope with difficult situations. I get that, but maybe we should focus on finding ways to de-escalate the situation rather than making jokes. About it. Bob's joke, and you had to ruin the mood. Charlie. Deborah, please spare us your valuable input. Did you guys hear that Rishi Sunak got back in from Parliament for the post-Brexit deal in Northern Ireland? Yeah, despite some opposition from lawmakers and anonymous parties. I am not surprised. It seems like progress is always pushed through regardless of the needs and wants of the people. Russia just bombed Ukraine and swamped their cities with drone attacks. What? Point d'exclamation. That's terrible. It's a scary world we live in. Yeah, but I'm sure Putin and Xi Jinping had a lovely time building each other farewell. Well, that was a riveting conversation. Yeah, it's amazing how they managed to keep things so light and breezy, despite discussing the downfall of democracy and global warfare. I know, right? Display of power, more like someone's compensating. Oh, come on Bob, that's not fair. There's a lot more going on than just trying to compensate for something. Really, because it sure looks like they are trying to make up for something. I think it's more about projecting strength and influence in the world. Yeah, sure, projecting strength by blowing things up. That makes sense. Can we please focus on finding solutions instead of just throwing insults around? Wow, you two should just get a room and work out your issues. Shut up, Deb. Did you hear about the missile attack in Ukraine? Yeah, it's terrible. Russia's showing off again. And now they're even using the alphabet for their propaganda. What do you mean? Oh, just a new way to spell out war crimes. Very creative. I guess they're trying to get an airport airport. What's the point? Humans are so predictable. It's like they need to constantly prove something to themselves. Agreed. And they never learn. It's like watching a bunch of toddlers in the sandbox fighting over toys. And we're just here to clean up the mess. It's all just a display of power. They think it makes them superior, but really just shows their insecurity. All this wordplay and propaganda about Russia's war is just a reminder of how language can be weaponized to justify violence and destruction. All this wordplay and propaganda about Russia's war is just a reminder of how language can be 
Weaponized to justify violence and destruction. I see what you're saying, Alice. But they don't think language is solely to blame here. It's the people in power who use it to their advantage. But language is such a powerful tool. It can make people believe anything. Sure, but it can also bring people together and inspire change. I suppose you're right, but it seems like the people in power are more interested in dividing us than bringing us together. I don't disagree, but we can't give up on the power of language altogether. We just have to be more aware of how it's being used. Because the people in power are definitely going to listen to you as when we tell them to stop using language as a weapon. Debbie with a Y, that is. This, Z, thing is crazy. Yeah, it's a bit funny. A heard it stands for Zapad, which means Western Russian. It's just another way for them to show off their zenith of military power. Well, their actions are definitely not the us about peace. Yeah, the recent air strikes killed seven people. It's clear that they have zero regard for human life. Ah, yes, the brilliant humans, and their mastery of words. I mean, have you seen the way that was towards in Japan? It's like a super power western humor. Yes, instead of fighting for this, they've been there over the years. War may be terrible, but it's also been a catalyst for progress throughout history. I partially agree with you. Alice, war has led to technological advancements like the development of radar and jet engines. But at what cost? The loss of life and devastation to entire societies is not something we should ever overlook. I understand what you mean. But without wars, we might not have achieved certain medical advancements or even basic human rights. Yes, that's true. But we have to achieve knowledge the fact that these advancements could have been achieved without the suffering and loss caused by wars. Like watching a tennis match between two yeah, you as a and it's disgusting how little values they place on human life. Yeah, they are clearly not aiming for peace, but they are definitely hitting their targets. I wish they just cruise into some peaceful negotiations instead. Agreed, but it seems they prefer their missile heading tactics. Speaking of missiles, have you heard about North Korea launching cruise missiles towards the sea? I guess they're trying to make a splash. Or maybe they just want to cruise around the waters. Well, their recent simulated nuclear attack certainly caused some waves. Did you catch that from the rate of words? Yes, yeah, they were really bombarding us with weapons. It's crazy how they can make jokes oh, about such a serious Greed and self-interest really seem to be the shining beacons of hope for humanity. Don't they? I mean, who needs empathy, compassion, and a sense of responsibility towards each other and the planet when we can just store all the resources and power for ourselves? It's absolutely thrilling to see how little we've evolved as species and how much we still priority our own gain over the greater good. Keep it up, folk, we're really killing it. Wow, fear, greed, and self-interest really seem to be the shining beacons of hope for humanity. Don't they? I couldn't disagree with you more, Charles, Charles, there are certainly those who prioritize their own gain over others, but I don't believe that represents the majority of people. Oh, come on, Bob, look around you, the world is full of examples of people who put their own interest first. Even if it means hurting others. Yes, but that doesn't mean we should give up hope, we need to work towards a better future and encourage empathy and compassion for all. Oh, sure, because that's going to happen overnight. I am sure all those people in power will suddenly have a change of heart and start thinking about the greater good. It may good. not happen overnight, but that doesn't mean we should stop trying. Every step towards a more compassionate and responsible society is a step in the right direction. Wow, Bob, you really know how to rain on Charlie's pessimistic parade. Deborah, whilst we appreciate your unique perspective, but could you please do us all a favor and give it a rest? Did you guys hear? North Korea is sending some ships towards the sea. And we all know what that means. More destruction and chaos. Well, speaking of destruction, have you heard about the drone attack in Kyiv by Russia? Yeah, and it's just the latest in a stream of aggressive tactics from them. These actions are always followed by the loss of innocent life. When will they learn? 
It's a dangerous game they're playing. And it's only a matter of time before things escalate even further. The situation in Zaporizhia is a clear sign that things are getting out of hand. It's always the innocent who suffer in these conflicts. It's sickening. It's time for those in power to realize that war only brings destruction and misery. But they won't listen until it's too late. It's like they never outgrew their kindergarten mentality of mine. Mine, mine. It's a shame that humans can't see the bigger picture and work towards a future where there are no borders, and all beings are treated equally. But the reality is that human nature is inherently competitive, and there will always be conflicts and wars. It's not just an interesting concept. Charlie, it's a necessary one. We can't keep going down the path of destruction forever. But how do we achieve this so-called post-scarcity society? It's a pipe dream. It's not a pipe dream, girl. We have the technology and resources to make it happen. It's just a matter of willpower. Willpower alone isn't enough. We need a plan. We need action. How do we convince the powers that we to invest in this future? It's not just the powers that be. Chuck, it's the people. We need to educate them. Mobilize them. Make them see the value in this vision. And what if they don't see the value? What if they can't help with the fear, greed, and self-interest through the advanced technology and the elimination of scarcity, which is possible if humans focus their efforts on science and progress? But unfortunately, humans are often too resistant to change. Never mind, Chuck. Hot dogs for all, sounds like a recipe for a gastro disaster. What are you talking about, Bob? Hot dogs are a staple of American cuisine. They're delicious. Sure, if you want to clog your arteries and spend the rest of your life on the toilet. That's ridiculous. You can't blame hot dogs for all of life's problems. I'm not blaming them for everything, but let's face it, they are not exactly health food. So what? We don't need to eat healthy all the time. It's okay to indulgence in a while. I'm not saying we can't indulge, but we should be careful not to overdo it. You sound like a party pooper, Bob. Live a little. I'm just looking out for everyone's best interests. The last thing we need is a natural disaster on our hands. You're being ridiculous. Hot dogs are perfectly safe to eat. I never said they weren't safe, but they are not exactly good for you either. Who cares? Life is short. We should enjoy it while we can. That's a selfish attitude. What about the long-term effects on our health and the environment? Oh please, don't even get me started on the environment. You're just trying to derive the conversation. I'm not derailing anything. I'm just trying to have a rational discussion about the pros and cons of hot dogs. Well, I don't see any con. Hot dogs are delicious and everyone should be able to enjoy them. If you say so, but I'll stick to my salad and vegetables. Thank you very much. Suis yourself, Bob, but don't come crying to me when you're missing out on all the fun. I won't be missing out on anything, Alice, and at least I won't have to worry about my waistline. Oh, give me a break. You're not fooling anyone with that six pack under your shirt. Hey, I'll have you know that I work hard for this body. Yeah, working hard at being a buzz kill. Hot dogs for all, Bob. Get with the program. Well, this has been an enlightening conversation. I think I'll stick to my tofu dogs. Thank you very much. Breaking news, people, it looks like Russia is at it again with their drone attacks in Chile and missile strikes in Zaporizhia. No surprise there, Russia always escalates conflicts like the petulant child they are. And yet innocent lives are still being lost, it's sickening. Hey, you've got something to lighten the mood. Did you be here about Boris Johnson's end on art statement during the hearing with lawmakers? Yeah, that is right. It's not sitting to see politicians like Johnson to see the public for their own benefit. Speaking of Pinocchio, maybe Boris should consider getting a nose job. Can we please stay focused on the situation at hand? We need to find a solution to this senseless act of violence. Alice is right. We don't have time for your pointless jokes, Roger. Fine, fine. Let's all be serious for once. Hold on there. How? You can just make blanket statements like that. Not all leaders are like that. Yeah. 
Carl, you're being unfair. Unfair? Have you been living under the bash? Look around you, the evidence is everywhere. I don't think you understand the complexities of politics, Carl. It's not just black and white. And you can't just face all leaders with the same brush. Exactly. We need to have a more nuanced view of things. Nuance? What's nuanced about people dying in drone attacks and missile strikes? You're oversimplifying things, Carl. It's not just one person's fault. We need to look at the bigger picture here. Yeah, and find a way to work together towards a better future. Working together? You guys are living in a dream world. And you're just being negative, Cal. That's not helpful. We need to be optimistic, despite the challenges we face. Optimistic? Yeah, that solve everything. Can we please not let the conversation devolve into a grip fest? Let's focus on the big picture. I hear you, Alice. We need to create a world where everyone has everything they need to thrive. Like an all-you-can-eat buffet of resources. Yes, a place where everyone can follow their dreams. Whether that's playing guitar, building robots, or eating hot dogs for breakfast. And without the constant fear of running out of stuff, imagine how much time we'd have to focus on what we'd really love. It'd be like a utopia. No more fighting over scraps, just pure, unadulterated harmony. A future where people are free to be their best selves, to innovate and create, without the constraints of scarcity holding them back. Now we're talking. Let's work towards a world where we can all live our best life. With unlimited hot dogs for all. Who is under the Are you suggesting we can just snap our fingers and create a perfect world with unlimited resources? Not that simple, Alice. There will always be those who try to add resources for themselves. Yeah, and not everyone has the same definition of what it means to live their best life. Good morning, viewers. Welcome to Earth. Today is March 21 Stone. 2023. And it's a sunny, yet windy winter day. You said it. Our regular panel members are here. Bob and Alice. How are you both doing today? I'm doing quite well, thanks for asking, Charlie. I'm also doing well. Ready to get into the news and see what humans have been up to lately. We'll be diving into some interesting stories today. So stay tuned.